Circle of Hope Network, doing life and being church together. Good morning, beloved. Happy Sabbath. I believe God has been good to us. Not only has He been with us for the past, for those of us who have been here earlier, two weeks, and for those who came just for the camp meeting for the past week, and I believe He has been blessing us with lots of wonderful messages. I don't know about you, but um, for me, um, camp meeting is a time of spiritual renewal and revival. And I came here with that expectation, and I know that God was not going to fall short of that. And he has tremendously blessed me as a person, and I believe he has also blessed you. And also, it is a time for fellowship. Because I look forward to spending time with my brothers and sisters whom I have not seen in months. And of course, we belong to a large conference, and as a result of that, we do not get to see each other that often. So it's a time for us to um, reconnect. Every morning, we begin the day with devotion, and we end also the day with devotion. What what a blessing. So this morning I have the responsibility of sharing with you in the devotional, and don't expect it to be complicated. Um, But rather, I hope and wish to talk to your heart, just as God spoke to my heart. So, what I would like to talk about this morning is something, in fact, I have gotten the title of my presentation this morning, the short devotional, from the text itself. And I have entitled it, In the Valley. In the Valley. So I believe most of us, if not all of us, we are quite well acquainted with Psalm 121. Psalm 121, and when you look at it, it says a psalm of degrees. And when you um, read uh, the psalm or psalms of degrees, you realize that they were written e- either by David or Solomon. And it was one of those psalms that the children of Israel, on their pilgrimage, Um, to Jerusalem uh, to worship that the fathers would have the responsibility of uh, teaching their children. So the Psalms were written as a song and at the same time as a prayer. And of course, you know that As they traveled from wherever they were to the temple, it was rather a difficult journey. And the Psalms of a degree, they were all written not only to help the children of Israel put and keep their trust in God, but also to Teach the little ones who would have been on the journey with their parents, especially the father, to be reminded of the fact that they should put their trust in God. And of course, you also know from the 15 Psalms of degree, so it was intended that when they are on their 
journey, and they would be singing these songs, reminding them of the fact that, yes, the journey is dangerous because anything could happen. And lots of robbers, thieves, on the way that could hurt them. And lots of even wild animals that could devour them. But yet, they could put their trust in God. And when they get to the temple, and as, I cl- as they climb the stairs, they were supposed to, on each step as they go up, recite one of these beautiful psalms. Of course, we are told that there were 15 steps. And as they take, I'm sorry to give you my bag, but I'm just illustrating something to you. As they climb up each step, they were supposed to pause and read or sing one of these psalms. Now, I want you to imagine in your mind the effect that would have had on uh, the children who were supposed to be taught to put their trust in God. So, Psalm 121. Can we read it together? I will lift up mine eyes unto unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor, nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. From this time forth, even forevermore. Shall the church say amen? Amen. Now, when you read this psalm, what comes to your mind? And if we were to go back to verse 1 of this 121st division of the psalms. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. So it gives us the sense that the writer was where? In the valley. In his journey. Hence, I entitled the presentation this morning, In the Valley. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. So he was in the valley, and it appears as if in the valley, it was not a pretty place to be. Exposed to all the elements of nature. From all angles. But yet, while he was in the valley, he had the courage to be able to look up But to To the Lord, from whence cometh my help. Now, as I am here, I'm going to pause to ask you the question, a question, are you in the valley? Now, I would really like, if in case you are in the valley, in the valley of your own circumstances, to pause and lift up your eyes where? Onto the hills. 
Because when you lift up your eyes onto the hills, there is some form of security that comes because when you are in the valley, in as much as it might be difficult, in as much as you might be exposed to the elements, but the fact that the hills that surround you are there to not only fortify you, but also to protect you and preserve you from the elements because the hills are much higher than the valley. Hence, when the hurricane comes, you are protected. And from, for those of us who are from the islands, and we know that during the summer months, when... It, it is hurricane season. And you know for sure that while you are in the valley, it comes with its own demise. But when it is hurricane time, you know you are protected. Because the wind passes over you and protects you. So when you look up, as the wind from the hurricane is blowing, when you see the damage that the wind is causing, but at the same time, your eyes are fixed on the hill because that's where your protection comes from. And I'm using this as an illustration to say, when you and I, we are in our valley, we can look up to the Lord for help. Are you in the valley? And in your own valley, what are you experiencing now? Your own valley could be some health challenges. In as much as the medical scientists, in as much as the medical system may not be able to find a solution for your health challenge, you can lift up your eyes unto the Lord. If you are in your valley, and your valley, all that you see around you are problems, family problems, and your children giving you headaches, I can guarantee you that where you are in your valley, you can lift up your eyes onto the hills from hence. Come at your help. And the verse 2 of Psalm 121, verse 2. My help cometh from who? From the Lord. If you have financial difficulties, that's your valley. But you can still. Lift up your eyes. Because your help will come from the Lord. If you belong to a church that is rather difficult, and somehow you try everything in your power to get moving, and for some reason you are stuck, I want you to know that you can lift up your eyes onto the hills. If somebody is making your life difficult, you don't have to be difficult. All you have to do is to lift up your eyes. I'll share with you some years ago, I was pastoring a church, and I will not say where, and I will not say which church. 
I was pastoring a church. It was rather a difficult church. The Each time I was going to have a board meeting, to be honest with you, I would be so overwhelmed because it was extremely difficult. The fight between the members, and I, I recall once, a fight nearly broke out between some members. And I recall once we nearly called the police. Fights between members. And as I sat there and I observed what was going on, and probably at the time I was at that church for about four or five months, and I kept talking to God, how is it possible to restore peace in that board? Because if the board is divided, what can you expect from the church? As I was in my study, doing my private and personal devotion, and talking to God, and I resolved in myself and I believe it was as a result of the bidding of the Holy Spirit. Keep the church board focused on God. So the next board meeting, I prepared myself quite well for that. And I said, I am going to ensure that it doesn't matter how long the agenda, it doesn't matter what we are discussing, I am going to ensure that in my personal paper, which is the agenda, I am going to draw some lines as to when I am going to pause, and it doesn't matter what we are going to discuss, we are going to go into singing and into praying. And I was there, and I looked across, and I could see the personalities that always cause trouble. And um, it doesn't matter what happens, it appears as if they just cannot agree. So as I sat there, and I drew the lines as to where I would like her to pause for us to sing. Not just to pray, because I know that some people, if you want them um, to pray, they can pray a very short prayer so that at least we can go, get it back into business of the agenda. So I wanted for us to keep our eyes focused on the hills from whence coming, come at our health, because we were really in the valley. And I told them exactly what was going to happen from now on. Not just for this board meeting, for the rest of my ministry in that particular church. And I told them, we don't need to vote on this because here we are talking about connecting with God. For the first time in my experience with that board, for the three and four months I was there. And as we spent time to pray, sing and pray, sing and pray. And that happened, we had the board meeting for two hours, and singing and praying happened I would say no less than five times during the two hours. At the end, I realized for the first time there was no fighting. 
It's like the Holy Spirit got a grip of everyone and subdued everyone. Not only was there any fighting in that board meeting, but we finished the agenda much earlier. <laughs> Instead of two hours, in about one hour and 20 minutes, we were done. We were able to accomplish the agenda and discuss everything that was to be discussed. And yet, finishing everything, at the same time, we sang five times, no less than five times, and we prayed no less than five times. You know, sometimes when we are in our valley and we acknowledge the fact that our help can come only from God, that's the time God showed up. That's the time God shows up. And I must tell you, for the time I spent in that church, I made it my point of duty every single board meeting. We had singing and praying. From that time on, we never had any more fighting. Amen. And sometimes people would come and say, Pastor, what happened? What did you do? It was not me. It was God. In fact, at my current church, the Silver Heights Seventh Adventist Church, and I'll tell you this, if you are a pastor, this is a church you need to pray to God to give you the privilege to pastor that church. It's a beautiful church. It's a lovely church. Lovely people. Lovely people. I love them. I have said to my church, not only to the church board, but also to the church at large, we are going to conquer Winnipeg on our knees. And the Silver Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church must be known as a church that prays. Because I don't know how it happens, but it does happen. It is clear to me that when a church prays, not only it stays together, but it is also powerful. It was not too long ago I was having a board meeting and it appeared as if Satan was trying to find his way in. And I reminded the church that we love each other, we care very much for each other, and we will never allow Satan to step foot in between us. And we are supporting each other, we're going to love each other, we're going to pray together. And right there in the middle of the board meeting, we just go into singing and into praying. And it's like, what happened? As I told you in my presentation, yesterday, at the, at the Silver Heights Church, and I, you, you, you will hear me keep talking about this church because I love my church so much. And for those of you who have visited my church, I, I, I'm not shy from telling them, of telling them how much I love them very much. Every year for the past two and a half years I've been here, last January was the second one, we begin the year with a 40 days of prayer. 40 days of prayer. From January 1 
to February 9th. And I, I've told them, as long as your beloved pastor, that's what I address them, your beloved pastor is your pastor. We are going to begin the year with God. And when I, when we started, every single day we pray for something. And we use the book 40 Days of Prayer by Dennis Smith. There are so many different topics. And the whole church is praying. They buy their own books and they follow whatever. Recommend, we pray at 6 in the morning and 6 in the evening. And for those who cannot, because of time schedule or work schedule, they cannot find the time to pray. And during this time also, we encourage family worship. That is very important. During the 40 days, and I've said to the church, if we are not careful, Satan will keep us in the valley at all times. But while we are in the valley, we must keep looking up to the hills from whence coming our help. And during the 40 days, I've said to the church, no board meeting. Some people say, what? No board meeting. No. During the 40 days, no departmental meeting. No meeting, we are, we are a church that, act, that we are accustomed to board meetings or lots of meetings. And during the 40 days, no preaching. Wow, no preaching. So on Sabbath morning for the divine service, no preaching. All we do as a church is to pray. And the elders and myself, we lead out in that. We have a reading from the book, and we go into prayer. We sing, and we go into prayer. For 40 days, for the six Sabbaths, six up, no preaching, no meeting, nothing. And all we do is to pray. And I encourage the folks who have their own issues, whatever those issues may be, just talk to God about it. And we'll see after the 40 days how we feel. And I can tell you right now, from the youngest to the oldest or eldest in my church, they'll tell you the most rewarding and memorable time of their life, during the year at least, is the 40 days. And during the 40 days, God shows up. He answers prayers. And most of the things that we have prayed for, either individually or corporately, as a church, we have prayed to God and asked God for, God has blessed us with them. So you're in the valley, in your valley. I would like to encourage you while you are in your own valley, ask God to give you the courage to lift up your eyes onto the hills. Why? Because that's where your help is coming from. Do not believe that the solution to your problems will come from elsewhere. In fact, God may use medium to answer your prayer. But what he wants you to do is that while you are in your valley, you should ask him for the courage to lift up your eyes onto the hills. And that's where your help will be coming from. As a church, and I keep saying to my beloved brethren back, in Winnipeg, God will do great things for us, in us, and through us when we keep our eyes focused on him. Shall we pray? 
dear God. This morning you woke us up. And you gave us the privilege to see this beautiful day. You reminded us of the fact that we are precious in your sight. So, for Father, we are asking you that as we have the privilege to call on you and to call you our Father, help us to rely on you the provider of everything and the sustainer of all lives. They are those who are in their own valley. Help them to lift up their eyes onto the hills and knowing that their help will come from you. Whatever they are going through, I am asking you in the name of Jesus Christ that you help them to keep their eyes focused on you, the author and finisher of their faith. May you help us to keep our eyes focused on you. Because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Circle of Hope Network, doing life and being church together.